A sample on a police car turned out dangerous. Another sample a couple of blocks away, not dangerous. But most interesting, in the mix, they are looking, they think, at specks of steel that used to be beams and elevators, marble from the lobby floor and facings. So over once the strongest architectural elements in the two towers were pulverized. Large portions turned into clouds like this one. Still, there is this mystery. If some of the hardest materials were vaporized, how... Yeah, how come we have so much paper? Very good question. So here again is West Broadway before and after. And here's where a bunch of toasted cars were. They were toasted with the uh, cloud from Tower 2. But over in here, the cloud, ta the cloud from Tower 2 did toast the cars, and you have a lot of fuming of cars over in that area. We're again looking down West Broadway at the street level, the swamp, I call it, and there's a lot of toasted vehicles here. Close up, more toasted vehicles. Uh, I don't know if you can see that this is already rusted. They almost instantly rusted, so we'll put that down in our data list. Missing door handles again. And someone commented that this doesn't look right for a car fire. Car fires look like they have a lot of soot and junk on them. Right. That doesn't mean this picture is wrong. It means that it might be a different process than a typical fire. And this poor car back here is missing its engine block again. And we have, again, our intersection where the toasted lot is here. Tower 1 stood there. And you can see the fuming back behind Building 7. Bunch of cars back there were fuming. They were turning into uh, fumes and disintegrating. That uh, West Street, D.C. Street intersection was just quite intriguing because it was just covered with paper. I call this Mr. Branford. He's in a lot of pictures. I don't know his name. It's just, it has Branford on the back of his jacket. This is a very interesting picture. These people were in the, their cubby holes hiding, and they just come out of hiding. And look at this guy's posture. Oh my gosh, where did it go? Tower 1 is no longer there. And they're just, like this guy with his arms folded. Just, what happened? They're shocked. They don't know what to think. Yeah, it would be a little bit uh, bothersome that there was a tower there when you came in in the morning. And here's uh, Mr. Branford standing there. Looking across VC Street, there's the toasted car lot. It's about a couple blocks or a long block away, but they're waiting in paper. And just to the left is Building 6, and on the other side of Building 6 is where Tower 1 was. I don't see anything else in the street. No, the paper is not burning. So was it hot? We've all seen these cloud chase pictures. This is uh, VC Street, where that's Building 7 a couple blocks away. So this cloud is chasing these people down. Here we are east of uh, the complex by a few blocks, people getting chased down by clouds. Did we ever see any toasted bodies left on the street when the cloud passed? This is the swamp, West Broadway, that was, had all those toasted cars. It was covered with people moments beforehand. We didn't see any toasted bodies. People didn't get toasted there. <clears throat> so we have these uh, fumes going up into uh, the upper atmosphere. Looks like this in the 12th. Looks like that in the 13th. How do clouds move? This is uh, Kuwait oil fire. And things do go in the upper atmosphere, but that's you know very fine particulate from burning. It doesn't look like this. This is white. This is from the 12th, from a satellite image. <clears throat> Notice how it goes straight, and then it has a kink in it, and then just kind of dissipates. I think it does that at a particular elevation. When it gets really high up, it's no longer, there's not enough atmosphere to have wind. And this is the next day. You get this bluish haze that keeps pouring upward. That's from, uh, I believe, the, the International Space Station took this picture. 
Now we'll go back to that VC West intersection. I call this the slot. It's this uh, opening in the middle of the street that goes down into a tunnel. Nobody's in there right now. This is right after Tower One went away. People are just exploring it. Soon after that, there's this picture by the Library of Congress. Very interesting picture. I came up with the term fuzzy blobs. You'll notice these uh, little fuzzy clouds, like one's right there behind the water cooler. And then you see this guy holding his nose. There's another one down here in the uh, slot. And then this poor fellow, I wonder if he inhaled one. It doesn't look like he's uh, doing too well. There's a lot of other ones around in there, but what are those? I've termed them fuzzy blobs. You know, maybe they attack steel. Maybe there's something in them that's activated. Here's one eating the, uh, the bottom of the mail truck. Whoops, I'm going to pass this in. <clears throat> Here's a bunch of, uh, I call that fuming, but there's a little bit of fuzzy blobs also on this side. That's the slot looking backwards. <clears throat> Are these pictures um, the day of me? Uh, I've got the date on, on a lot of them. Um, this this one is from 9-11, and that's on 9-11. Because this is building 7 here, so we know it's on 9-11, because it's still standing. <clears throat> and then looking out uh, across, this was the, from the 13th. That's uh, West Street with a uh, few um, floors of wheat checks from the western wall of Tower 1 laying out there in the street. But we see this fuming down here. And look at this, in October, we still have fuming from Tower One. Why do we have fuming? Now, is that steam from all the molten metal? But wouldn't these guys look kind of cooked at this point? Some more images from the 31st of October. Look at all this fuming from the ground. If those who planned this event knew about this uh, after effect, they'd need a cover story, wouldn't they? What's interesting is this picture is slightly different than this one. It's not constant. It sputters. Also, the arm of this digger has uh, got a different amount of stuff. So apparently the stuff's moving around. I noticed they have a hose here, a line that's sprinkling water over keeping it down. It must be heat. Again, human pictures. And I call this nano haze. It's just uh, the material appears to break down finer and finer until it just starts floating. Have you read any reports of the smell? I have read, read some reports of uh, an odd smell, but I'm not sure what it means. But I would love to hear from people who have smelled it and what they, how they describe it. I'm one of those people. Great. Yes. Uh, didn't smell like a burning building. It was very painful. Open the microphone. Yeah. Yeah. This is great. Thank you. <laughs> well, I smelled it every day and night until December of that year. And... Um, it didn't have a smell like a regular burning building. It was very painful to the nose. At the time, I was thinking, am I smelling asbestos, fiberglass, what is this? But never smelled it before or since. Describe this picture of Roma comparison. Quite, I would say, it was more the, the sensual feel of it more than the smell. It was very painful, a sharp, you know, it was more of a, a pain than like a smell. Like the saw who was holding the nose? Yes, exactly. And you compare it to something else? Um, it had some components of a burning building. Those were kind of in the background. And even on the first few days, we could smell the burning bodies. But really, the uh, in December, it was just, we were we lived about a mile from ground zero, and it was so strong that we couldn't um, hang out on our um, fire escape. It pushed us in off the fire escape. Did you cough? Your oh, I didn't. Uh, yes, I, I had sinus reactions, you know, pretty serious. Well, you Tracy Blevins.